In this tutorial we're going to start with a blank job and we're going to show you how to create the vectors that you can see on the screen to make this part. We're going to go through a lot of different tools within the software for vector creation and editing including looking at how you can use things like the snap grid to help you locate vectors, how you can use the snap settings to help you construct your geometry and then examining many of the different tools that you've got both for um, adjusting and manipulating the vectors to finish your part. So let's go ahead and start a new copy of the software. So let's start by clicking on the icon to create a new file. And for this job we're going to set up a file which is 9 inches in X, 9 inches in Y. Material thickness is going to be 0 0.375 or 3 eighths of an inch. And because of the data I have um, for the coordinates for the part we're going to draw here, I'm going to set my XY datum position to the lower left because everything's referenced from there. Units are going to be in inches, so I can go ahead and hit OK. To help us quickly and easily draw our part accurately, we're going to use a feature of the software called snapping. There's a number of ways that the software will snap to existing data points or to geometry such as guidelines or the snap grid, which I'm going to switch on in a moment. To access the snap grid and to see all the other snapping options that we have, we can come over to the edit drop down menu, click on that and then choose snap options from the list. You can see the shortcut key F4 will also get me to this particular um, menu. Within the snap settings, I can choose different parts of the geometry, different parts of my existing vectors that the software will automatically snap to, and you'll see me using those in a moment. I can also activate something called the snap grid. If I check this box here, that's going to switch on the grid. You may see that in the background here expressed as little grey dots. The grid spacing I'm going to set to be 0.5 inches. That means I'm going to have a dot that I can snap to in my job area every 0.5 of an inch. Some of the other things I could set up within this menu, as well as the data points that I'll snap to, are things like whether I'm going to snap vertically and horizontally, and what angle, in angle increments I would like to snap to. This is currently set to 15 degrees, and again you'll see me use that as we lay out our part. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And now what we can do is use these snap grid data points to sketch out the first part of the outline of our um, object. So I'm going to come over and click on the draw polyline tool and I'm going to start by moving this into the um, work area here and you'll see as I get over one of these points the cursor position is displayed as a very specific value which is in half inch increments which is what we set up within the snap grid settings. So the first point I'm going to click here is going to be at X1, Y4.5 and I can see as the cursor changes and shows me snapping when I click I know that's the end of that vector is going to be exactly at that point. Then I'm going to come down and I'm going to snap to the point here um, which is going to be three and a half inches down from that first point and we're going to snap to that point there. Then I'm going to come across and um, seven inches snap to that point there, go up seven inches and snap to that point there and we can see that being displayed next to the cursor and then come over 3.5 inches and snap to that point there. Once I'm finished creating this, I can right mouse click and that will exit that polyline function and finish creating that first vector for me. Now I'm going to sketch another line here, so I'm going to come over to the draw polyline tool and I want to start one inch over from this line here. So if I put the cursor there, I can move over one of the snap grid dots, that's half an inch, move over two and that's one inch. I can click and snap there. And then the other point I want to make is going to be three and a half inches up here. But before I click that, I just want to show you how you can uh, temporarily override the snap grid. If you have the snap grid switched on and you don't want to snap to the points in it, um, then you can hold the shift key down and you can see that that is no longer going to pick up and snap to those points. Okay, so it's no longer registering those points as there. As soon as I let the shift key up, again, we're going to start snapping to those individual points. So here I'm just going to click and make this a vertical line three and a half inches long 
Again, I'm happy with that, so I can right mouse click in order to finish creating uh, that line and exit the function. Now I no longer need the snap grid for this particular design, so I'm going to switch it off. And if you remember, as well as um, going through the edit drop down menu, the shortcut key to access the snap options was F4 on the keyboard. That's the function key, F4. So if I hit that, that'll bring up the uh, options here, and I can come in and uncheck snap to grid and hit OK. And that's now deactivated the snap grid, so we'll no longer be using that in order to lay out the rest of the part. I'm just going to click in the white space to deselect the line I've got there and I'm going to come over and click on the draw polyline tool and sketch um, another polyline. This time I'm going to snap to the end point of the line here. Now you're, I'll know I'm snapping because the cursor changes and shows me. In this case it's snapping to these crosshairs and I know if I clicked there now that would snap to the end point of that line. Other snaps I'll get are things like the midpoint of a line which you can see there and also things like centers of arcs, which we'll use um, later in order to construct some of the geometry. Very, very important to notice, though, that as the cursor changes, that means I'm now going to snap to that point when I click. If the cursor is just off and hasn't snapped, then I won't automatically pick up that point. I have to see the cursor change to pick it up. Now I'm at that position there. I can click, and in a lot of cases what you may want to do is snap to a piece of geometry but then actually enter some values to finish off the rest of the line that you're creating. So in this case what I know is that I would like this line to be at a 38 degree angle and um, I want it to overlap past this line I've created here so we can trim it back to it. So I'm going to come across to the menu. We've snapped the first point of the line so now I can say that I want the next point to be at a 38 degree angle and we're going to enter a length of 2 and hit add and so what that's done is created the next point at 38 degrees and then two inches along so we'll close this now and then I'm going to create another line snapping up to here so we're going to come back into the draw polyline tool I'm going to click on this end and this time I want it to be at 30 degrees now if you remember we've got the snapping set to 15 degree increments so as we move the cursor you can see if I go slowly then it automatically snaps 15 30, 45, so I can come over here and just move until I get to 30, make sure it's overlapping past the end of this line, and as long as I see those values next to the cursor, then I know when I click that that will have snapped and be at a 30 degree angle. Again, if I'm happy with that, I can right mouse click to exit that function. Now with our overlapping lines here, I've created more geometry than I actually need, but I've done that deliberately, so it's very easy now for me to come over, select the uh, scissors icon here, the trim vectors, which is under the edit objects part of the drawing tab. When we click on that, what this allows me to do is trim off um, overlapping pieces back to the intersection. So as I move over the line, you'll see the scissors open, showing that I can trim that piece. There's only one option on the form here, and that's whether I want it to join the pieces after they're trimmed or um, leave them as individual objects. In this case, I'd like it to join them. So that means when I click here and when I come over here and click here, that that now will be joined as a single line. And then at the top here, I'm going to come to the left and click that, go above and click that and close. And if we select this, we can see that's joined those now into a single entity made up of those lines that we've trimmed back. Now what I'd like to do is put a radius on each of these sharp corners. A radius uh, in a drawing package is typically known as a fillet. So if we come over to the uh, filleting tool, which is here, create fillets under the edit objects. In here I can specify that I want a normal fillet type. There are various other specialty fillets that are dealt with in uh, other tutorials. In this case we're going to go with a normal fillet and the fillet radius is going to be 0 0.5 inches. Now when I go over a corner that I can fill it, you'll see again the cursor helps me by showing me a check mark. So if I click when I see that check mark, that's automatically going to round that corner based on the radius that I've put in here. So I can click these two here. As I come over this point, I don't get a check mark. Whenever I don't see a check mark, it means that the software is not able to put a fillet at that point.
Now in this case, the reason that I can't put a fillet in there is because these are two separate objects. I can only fill it between straight lines that are connected as a single object. So what I would need to do in this case is close this. If we select this, you'll see what I mean. There is one object. If I select that, that's a separate object. And these two need to be joined. So this is one continuous line and then I'll be able to put a fillet in there. So if I select this line, hold shift down and select this line, we can come across to the join open vectors function. I'm going to click on that. It tells me I currently have two open vectors. The tolerance I specify in here says that if it finds endpoints within this distance that it should join them together. The larger the value here, the um, more scope it will have for looking for things to join together. So if you import data, for instance, you may need to play around with that value depending on how the data was drawn in another package. Here, they're practically coincident, so the software tells me that even with that very small tolerance, that after I'm going to have one closed vector, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm just going to click on the button that says join, close this, and now if I click on this, we can see that that's selected as a single object. It's worth uh, possibly mentioning at this point uh, that joining a line and grouping a line are quite different things. I could have grouped those two objects together and the software would have treated them as a single object for things like moving, rotating, positioning, but internally it would still have considered them to be two separate pieces that could be ungrouped at any time. Now that I've joined these, the software considers them one continuous line, and that means that in terms of things like the filleting and toolpathing and stuff, that the software is going to treat them as a single line and understand that this is a closed vector. Quite different than if I'd just grouped together two open vectors. So here we have our join vector. I should now be able to come across, click back on the uh, fillet icon here, and come back in. We've still got the right value. Now when I come over that corner we can see we get the checkbox, I can click there, can click here, can click here, can click here, and I can click here, and we've put our fillets on each one of our sharp corners. Again, just to reiterate, I can only uh, fill it between two straight lines, I cannot fill it between curves or arcs. Once I'm happy with that, once I've clicked on each of those corners, I can hit close. For the next part of our design, we want to put a half circle located halfway along this line with a diameter of three and a half inches. The easiest way for me to do that is to create a circle and then essentially subtract that from this shape here. So if we come over and click on the icon to draw circle, we can use the snapping ability again to come across and as I move the cursor along here, you'll see that it will pick up the midpoint of this line. That, if I click, will create a circle at whatever diameter or radius I've currently got specified here. And you can see it's entered that coordinate for the center point of the circle. Now what I can do is put in the value that I need. So let's enter a diameter of 3.5 inches, hit apply and close. And now what we want to do is subtract that circle from this shape here. So to do that, I'm going to select the shape that I would like it to be taken from, and then holding shift, I'm going to select the shape that we're going to subtract. So you select the, the main object first, then hold shift and select the object which is effectively going to cookie cut this shape out of it. Come over and we've got these weld vector tools here. We can create a union of the vectors, subtract, or the intersection. In this case, I'm just going to hit the subtract button and we can see that's taken the second object away from the first and created our semicircular um, cavity there. Now I'm going to create some uh, drill hole circle locations and I want each of these to be at the center point for these fillet arcs we've got around the outside. Now, we, the snapping will automatically pick up a centre point of an arc, so we should be able to come over to the Draw Circle tool, make sure our diameter is the size of the hole that we want to create, so in this case, uh, 0.25 of an inch, quarter of an inch. And if I come down here, I just need to look for this um, cursor here. When I get to the centre point of that arc, it will display the coordinate, give me the crosshairs with a circle and a dot in the middle. So if I click there, it will create that circle for me at that point. Again, I can come up to the next one and click here. I'm going to come up to the next one and click, next one and click. 
next one and click and sometimes you may need to kind of hunt around for it if you need help you could always look for the edge of the fillets here and kind of work up from there to find the center point and again once you get the crosshairs you click and that's going to create that vector in there so we've been able to very quickly snap those circles into those positions based on the center point of that external arc that we created with the fillet tool so let's just close that now so our parts coming along quite well but let's imagine uh, we just realized that we'd made a mistake with one of the values or that uh, we'd got a design change or something like that. And that this line here, this vertical part, uh, actually needed to be another uh, 19 30 seconds of an inch moved over to the right. If we wanted to change this, um, there's a number of things we can do based on the current state of the part. We'd first of all probably want to delete that point there. Next, I'd want to go over to the fillet tool, click on that, and if I come over a fillet, as long as we haven't edited that fillet, then we can click on it again, and that will unfillet it, so it will go back to the original shape that it was, it was at. So if I click on both of those fillets, we've gone back to the sharp lines. If I wanted to, I could apply different values now to these, or in this case, I can hit close. I'm going to select the line here, and I'm going to go into the node editing. Now I can do that by clicking on this icon here or I can hit N on the keyboard as a shortcut and it's a very very useful shortcut to remember. So if I hit N on the keyboard that lets me go into the constituent parts of the vector and edit node by node, span by span. In this case what I'd like to do is cut this piece out and move it over. So I'm going to come over this node, I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to go to cut vector. Now notice the shortcut key for that is C, so if I click on that, now you can see this is in effect an open vector where the start and end points are in the same place. Green node always um, indicates the start point of a vector. If I come up to this node, notice how when I move over the node the cursor changes, showing me that I have a node under the cursor. If I hit the C on the keyboard, then that will cut that node point, and so now if I come over and click on the selection mode to exit node editing we can see that I've got two separate vectors by cutting at those two nodes there I've created this separate vector here I've effectively cut it out of the original now I'd like to move this over by the distance we need to edit this so I'm going to come over to the move selected objects under transform objects and I'd like to move this relative to its current position and I want to move that over 19 30 seconds of an inch. Now I don't remember what the decimal value is for 19 30 seconds but we can use the software's ability to do a calculation uh, within the value box here. So it's going to be a move in X and what I'd need to do is put in 19 divided by 32 and then most important to remember is to calculate this function before we hit apply and to calculate this I'm going to hit the equal sign on the keyboard so I've typed 19 divided by 32 so 1930 seconds when I hit equals it will calculate the decimal value for that and then I can hit apply and we've made our edit that we wanted to uh, make there so we can close this now what I need to do is maintain the angles of my original lines but get these all to join up and retrim them again. And the best way to do that is to use the extend function. So if I come down here, click on the extend vectors icon under edit objects, the way that this works is I come over and hover over the line I want to extend until I see the dotted um, line extended from it and I click. That will fix that in place and then I can move over other geometry. I could move over two points uh, that didn't overlap and it would extend to them or in this case I just move over this line. You'll see that the line becomes um, trimmed or snaps to this object that I'm over and if I click there the line's extended. I can do the same with this one now if I click here to extend it and then click on this object to extend it to. Now I can close, come back to my trim vectors, the scissors just trim those pieces off and with the rejoin trimmed sections I've got a closed vector now. Now I can come back to my fillet option, same values in there, 0.5 of an inch normal fillet and I can click over each of those corners to add the fillets back in. I'm going to close that 
come up to draw circle and with my diameter of 0.25 inches set in there again I'm going to snap to my new center point for that fillet that we've just created and then right mouse click to exit that function. So you can see there we were able to remove the fillets we went in with the node editing in order to cut that part of the line out. We moved it across using the software's ability to do a calculation within the form. Then we used the extend tool and then trimmed it back and added the fillets and uh, recreated the new position for our drill hole. The next thing I'd like to create is a set of rectangles which run up the side here and will be pocketed out when we come to do the toolpathing for our part. So I'm going to come over, click on the Draw Rectangle tool under Create Vectors and the size of my rectangle is going to be 2 and 3 eighths of an inch wide and 3 quarters of an inch high. So I can use the uh, calculation again if I want to for the 2 and 3 eighths just to show you how you'd enter that. So let's put in 2 plus 3 divided by 8, so 2 plus 3 eighths and then remembering to hit the equals key on the keyboard to calculate that value. There's the decimal for that and I'm going to enter 0.75 for the height and hit create and close. So there's my rectangle. Now I would like the first of my set of rectangles to be in uh, aligned to the right hand side of my main shape and one and a half inches up from the bottom edge here. So what I'm going to do is make sure my rectangle selected. I'm going to hold shift down and select my main object. I'm going to come into the align selected objects and I'm going to say that I would like the inside edges to be aligned to the right. So if I click on that, that's going to move my rectangle to my last selected object. And then I'm going to click on this icon to align them at the bottom as well. So that's aligned them in the bottom right hand corner. Now I can hit close. I'm going to click in the white space to deselect. Click on the rectangle to select it. Come over to move selected objects from under the transform area and relative to its current position I would like to move that in Y 1.5 inches. So Y 1.5, I'm going to hit apply and close and that's now in the correct position. Now I'd like to create four copies of that rectangle each one with a 3 8 inch gap um, between them. So I'm going to go into the array tool, we're going to create a linear array and click on this icon here and I would like this um, to go vertically so I'm going to create four rows that's four up in Y uh, columns is going to be one because I just want a single column and I can choose between either using the gap between the objects or the offset which is just the distance that's going to move each of these parts as it creates the copy in this case I want to create the gap and I'm going to enter the value of 3 eighths of an inch 0.375 and you have the option in the form here of choosing whether you'd like um, the shapes that you create at the end of this uh, copying function to be grouped together or not. In this case I don't need them to be grouped so I'm just going to hit copy. It's going to create my four objects as I specified here with the gap that I specified here. Let's hit close. So I'm happy um, that these pockets are going to cut all the way to the right hand edge here but the corner of this one is getting closer than I would like to my semicircle. So I'd like to create a gap between those and trim uh, this off to make sure we maintain that consistent gap. How I'm going to do that is to select this outline, I'm going to come to the offset function and I'm going to offset this closed shape inwards and we're going to put in a distance of 3 eighths of an inch and go ahead and hit offset and close. So you can see we've created um, a vector which is 3 eighths of an inch away from this. Now we just need to trim this piece out. So I'm going to come over to the scissors, the trim vectors icon, and I'm going to cut that corner and then I'm going to cut this piece and cut this piece and hit close. Now notice we're still left with uh, this here because we've trimmed it back to these circles so what I want to do now is select this and hit delete on the keyboard in order to delete uh, that leftover geometry that we'd created. So now we've got this nice um, arc in here trimming off the corner of our pocket to make sure we maintain the gap that we want between that circle, uh, semicircle and where the pocket is. Next I'd like to create a rectangle in the middle of the part that goes from the top of this rectangle to the bottom of this rectangle. So what I can do is snap those values, enter the width and then align that in the middle of the part here. If we come over and click on draw rectangle, I can click, uh, so make sure my cursor's over there so it's snapping, click and hold the mouse key down. 
come down to this bottom corner, snap there and let go. So what that's done is that's picked up that position and entered the height of 3 for my rectangle. And now when I put in my width of 0 0.75 and hit create, that's going to build the rectangle based on those first two points we snapped to. So if I hit close now, what I can do is select the rectangle, hold shift and select my main outer shape, come into the align selected objects, and here I want to center this um, within the middle of my part horizontally, so effectively in the center of X for the part. So I'm going to click on this icon here, and that centers the first vector to the last vector selected. We can hit close. Now to finish off our design, I want to enter some text that we'll be able to engrave within uh, this central pocket that we just created. So I'd like the text to fit within this box. So what I'm going to do is select the box. I'm going to come over and click on the icon to draw text within a vector box. When I click on this, the type of text that I want to edit here, because I'm going to engrave this with a pointed cutter, I'm going to use the single line text. We have our normal kind of true type fonts that we'd use for things like v-carving. In this case, I just want a single line that I'm going to be able to um, profile along with a sharp cutter to engrave this text into the material. From the single line uh, fonts, I'm going to choose Helvetica 1L, so sing, uh, that's only made up of one line, and I'm going to type in to here, Vectric Widget, and I'm going to hit Apply, and what we're going to see is the text I've created is very small. It's been set to fit within the box that we'd chosen when we came in here, but because I create text horizontally within the software, it's effectively fitting it across the wrong dimension. Now see, you can see it's picked up those bounding box dimensions. So what I can do is just swap those around in order to get the dimensions in the right um, orientation for the way that we create text. So if I change the width, instead of being 0.75 to match the current height, which is 3, and then change the height to be 0.75, I'm not editing the box itself. I'm just editing the area, the size that I'm telling the software I want to create this text in. So I have a normal margin set. I'm going to hit apply. So there it's showing me a little grey outline of the box and I can see now how my text is going to fit in there. I can hit close and now with that text selected I'm going to come over to the rotate selected objects, click on rotate and enter an angle of 90 degrees, apply and close and we can see that's located correctly within my box now. So that was just a case of understanding that when I create text within the software, it's going to be done horizontally. So if my box is at a different angle, I'd want to just find out the dimensions of the box. I may need to use a measure tool if it's at an angle, create my text to within the uh, dimensions of the box and then rotate it to orient it. So at this point, our design's finished. So let's go ahead and save the part in the project folder. Go to File, Save As, and I'm going to give this the name widget-vector.crv. We can hit save, and if you wanted to, you could look at that version and see the part in the exact state as I've drawn it in the tutorial here. In this tutorial, we've looked at a lot of different ways to create and edit vectors within the software. We started showing you how you could access the snap options, switch on the snap grid to help you sketch uh, your vectors when using the creation tools. We looked at a number of ways that you can construct vectors, the trimming tools in order to um, trim them back to each other, how we can snap to things like the art centers to create the drill holes that we've got here. We showed you um, subtracting uh, one vector from another to create our semicircular shape. Then we generated our rectangles using the alignment tools. We were able to accurately position those and then use the array tool in order to create multiple copies of the first one. And then we showed you how you can uh, construct some text and use the values within the software, pick up values as we did from a vertical box, and use that to create horizontal text that we could then rotate into position. In the companion tutorial to this, we're going to go on with this part and show you how you can generate toolpaths for it. We're going to use the layers to help us manage the uh, vectors within the design and then ultimately show you how those layers can be very beneficial for organization when we come to nest this part to make many um, copies of it and to assign toolpaths to those copies. And that concludes this particular video.